I feel like I'm stating the obvious, starting this story with college is expensive. Many people have to take on a ton of debt, not only to pay for tuition, not only to pay for books, but also to pay for all these extra fees. One of those is the student activity fee. It's supposed to go toward things that benefit the student body in general, like student organizations. But we found out one college right here in St. Petersburg has been misusing millions from those student activity fees to pay for athletic scholarships. And that's against Florida law. How did this go on for so long? Let's see what's brewing. Hi, I'm Jenna Bourne, and I'm an investigative reporter at 10 Tampa Bay. If you're new here, welcome to our caffeine-fueled homemade deep dive into issues that matter to you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now, at this point, you might be asking, Jenna, how did you find out about this? What, like other people don't read audits on the Florida Auditor General's website in their spare time? <sighs> I really need cooler hobbies. Anyway. The Florida Auditor General found in 2019, St. Petersburg College improperly used more than $453,000 from student activity and service fees to fund 89 student athletic scholarships. That's 10% of those fees just going to athletic scholarships. But this didn't just happen in 2019. Why has St. Petersburg College been using student activity fees to pay for individual student athletic scholarships? Well, when we went back and looked after the audit, it had been something we've done for 17 years. And so that precedes me. So I'm not really sure and can't say why um, that we started doing that in the first place. The school tells us the fee costs each student between $7.63 and $9.18 for every credit hour they take. And that adds up. Over those 17 years, the college used more than $9 million of student activity fees to pay for athletic scholarships. $9 million paid by students that were supposed to go to student activities not to pay for other students' tuition. This is money coming out of the pockets of struggling students and young people. This is the money coming out of pockets of parents investing in their students, in their children's education, even when they maybe don't have enough money at home to support their lives. Cody Hunanian is the program director for Student Debt Crisis, which advocates for people with student loan debt. Often what comes up is that these athletic programs are big money makers. And that's a huge misconception because in a majority of schools across the country, uh, athletic programs, including football programs, are a loss. But wait, is that true? We asked sports economist Alan Sanderson. Most of these programs don't make money. Uh, they lose money. Even you can take probably 15 uh, Division I college football teams that make money, the rest of them lose money. Last year, an NBC News investigation exposed students at universities with Division I sports teams may be paying thousands in athletic fees, which sometimes paid for athletic scholarships. How does a college like this that doesn't even have a football team benefit from giving athletic scholarships? I can't conceive that it does. Keep in mind, St. Pete College doesn't just have athletic scholarships. It has activity scholarships for band, dance, drama, chorus, and visual arts. But the school confirms none of those were funded by student activity fees, only athletic scholarships. Since the operational audits were coming in clean, there, there was never really a question, right? There wasn't anything that raised any alarms that seemed for that to be out of place. But you know, the, the law is what it is when it comes to how these fees are supposed to be used. How did this go on for so long? Well, overall, the, the student activity fee is supposed to be used for the, you know, general benefit of the students. And our athletic program is funded out of student activity fees, and that's absolutely allowable. And the program within the program included athletic scholarships for those students. I asked the Florida Auditor General's office why this hasn't come up in the college's previous audits. And the bottom line is they don't audit everything every time. Quote, because audit efforts cannot practically extend to all areas of an entity's operations, the scope of each operational audit is limited and varies based on a risk assessment of the particular entity under audit. We reached out to a bunch of student organizations at St. Pete College to find out how they feel about all this, but didn't hear back. Instead, we heard from the college that they heard we were reaching out to students and they'd like to set us up with one. I only found out recently and basically because of 
your investigation. Christy Lynn Lapine is a leader within St. Pete College's Student Government Association. St. Pete College's marketing director also sat in on our Zoom interview. What goes through your mind when you hear that part of the activity fees you've been paying were going toward individual students' athletic scholarships? It actually doesn't bother me, the fact that they go towards scholarships. They go towards helping put people into the position of being students, into this experience of college life and continuing their education and bettering themselves. Honestly, that's a perfect way to spend this money. Except that it is against Florida law. So St. Pete College tells us it's going to use a different fee, the financial aid fee and the St. Petersburg College Foundation to pay for athletic scholarships from now on. And they're going to reimburse the student activities fee budget for the $453,000 the auditors identified, but not the full $9 million. Thanks for watching What's Brewing. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and I'll see you next time.